purpose. I mean, if Dave, I, I don't know where Dave is. Yeah, so I, we'll just call the meeting to order. 6.33, Apple time. Yep. So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended this evening or added? Nothing on my end. No, nothing here. Motion to approve the agenda as written. Second. Okay. We don't have to do any uh, all, all in favor because we. Uh, you know. Paul, should we just bounce back and forth? You move, I second, vice versa. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. I got it. <laughs> or you could just make it easy and do the same. That way, Therese can just enter it in the same. No, Lindley Paul, Lindley Paul. <laughs> no, that would be too easy. <laughs> yeah, why well, make it easy on her? Yeah. <laughs> why? Yeah, why? Yeah. Why do that? All right, so uh, we don't have any appointments this evening, so we'll go to public comment. So if there's anything uh, that's not on the agenda this evening, anybody wants to bring up? Uh, only person in the background is Ellie. Sounds like Ellie will probably brief us when we get to the bonfire thing. Is that what it sounds like, Ellie? Okay, so we're good to go there. Uh, first uh, is just the approval of the warning which we have gone back and forth a couple of times. And uh, I believe we pretty much all uh, agreed to the warning at the last meeting. Do we need to discuss and decide about uh, in-person versus Australian ballot first and then the warning? Here comes Dave. Um, yes, Lindley, that's a good point. You guys have never, we have talked about going Australian ballot and obviously we have been leaning that way, but you're right. Because if you don't go Australian ballot, this warning is not what you all will be signing tomorrow. You need to come to the town office tomorrow. I'm gonna leave it at the back entrance and you can sign any outstanding payables for payroll as well as accounts payable and the warning. Okay. So, so I guess we can talk about, so the uh, Senate had approved um, well, I think they had approved it prior to last meeting in regards to going to. Um, they had, but the governor hadn't signed it. And at that point, I don't believe that there was any talk about the write in uh, piece of it and having your uh, go get uh, signatures. So, so they have, um, they have approved to go to Australian ballot for any towns that do in person meetings, um, as well as they have waived the uh, candidacy uh, sign signatures. They have the petition requirements. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, I, I guess right now the options they give us is we can we can continue on in person on the date as normal. Um, the next is we could do Australian ballot like we did last year, and then the third is we could wing a date at another time to hold in person. So um, those are kind of the the options that we have at this point. Mm -hmm. We did, I did reach out to Jamie Canarney at the school just um, in case. And uh, he said that the school will be closed that day. So it is still available. Obviously Pam can do her election there. If you wanted to do a town meeting, if you were gonna do it in person, um, you could, but there would be a required mask mandate from the school. <clears throat> so those were Jamie's, um, rules. My recommendation is still the same, uh, is that you, unfortunately, is that you go Australian ballot. We're still seeing an uptick in Bethel of COVID as we are everywhere. And it just takes one person, you know, to get really sick. And I just, um, I'm not really sure you guys are loaded with options. I actually feel bad that the state kicked it to the select board. I think the state should have decided, but Hence, they kicked it to you just like they did the mask mandate. I was going to say, stuff. seems like the state's been kicking a lot of things to the lower levels lately. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's because they get burnt so bad for shutting everything <laughs> down the way they did. I think you're right, Paul. You know, so. Yeah. One, one yeah. thing that I thought was interesting, you know, not, not to say I'm, I don't know, one way or the other on it, but I was reading up on some towns like ours um, that a year ago that went to Australian ballot. Um, because of COVID, and uh, and one town that's local was Williamstown that normally does theirs in person, and uh, they have decided that they're going to keep theirs in person this year. Um, so I tried to dig up information on like how many of the seventy four towns are doing it or not doing it, and 
there's not really any information out there. You know, you'd probably have to call every single town to find out, but yeah. <laughs> it sounded like, like there were some that were staying. And we all have the same deadline to sign the warning. So it's probably that you have towns just like us that are making a decision, you know, now to, to, to deal yeah. with it. So yeah, there, there was a town, I, I don't know if it was Rochester or Hancock or one of those out there that just pushed it out into uh, May. Yep. Sometime the end of, toward the end of May. Yeah. Brookfield yeah. did that last year, kicked it to May and then. It was outside and I know it was raining. I don't know if they rented a tent or what, mm -hmm. but it was raining that day. You know, we have so much to do that I just feel like let's just do it and move on and get past it. And um, because to kick it out further is honestly, I just don't see the point. I feel like if we just do Australian bout, then we can move on as a group to deal with it. But of course, that's not my decision. It's yours. So I'll do whatever you say. I think I would lean with um, where Teresa is saying of just, we don't know, we don't know what it's gonna be like at that point and just go for what's safest for our whole community at this point mm -hmm. um, and keep keep the date in March, but go Australian ballot for this yeah. year. And I think we actually had a, a larger participation going that route last year than we normally would have had at a, at a get together town meeting. We didn't have pie, but you know, we could have pie at the polling place like we did last time. <laughs> yep. So I, I would I would be in favor of going the Australian ballot route. And I and I think and Teresa and I had talked today, and I think what's the only thing we just have to make sure that is clear with with the citizens is because there's word out there that we want to vote for Australian ballot for future years. And if we go Australian ballot now, it's just making sure that people understand that the only reason why we're doing this is because the state, you know, Senate rules allows for us to do it based on COVID only. <clears throat> I think we will get some confusion out there. Um, but um, but other than that, I, I, I like Lindley said, I to pick another date, I think, it, you know, there's not really much science behind that, right? I mean, uh, one of the largest outbreaks was in July last year. So the, the public just needs to know, pick, you know, they can't vote for Australian ballot next year. We will be open. We will have from the floor next year if we right. do the Australian ballot this year. There's right. no way to avoid that. Exactly. Right. Right. Dave's well, right. I just, the only confusion I could see is all of a sudden, if we are voting Australian ballot for some people that were like, wait a minute, I thought we were going to vote on this, not do it. They, just as long as we have it advertised that it's due to COVID, you know. This year right. only. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like mean, it's, little, and if people. But like Dave said, then, then the warning won't have that on it. Won't have the um, Australian ballot because we'd have to wait another year. Correct. Well, Which it I, doesn't, obviously it's not on there as, as, we're not voting right. Australian ballot. We had to take that off because the state S-172 said it had to come off. Yeah, the last paragraph of a, of a law says you cannot specifically exactly. cannot do that. So part of it is going to be, you know, people will, when they're going to get there, they're going to see the ballot. If they have questions, they can ask at mm -hmm. the time. Obviously, um, I it does say, you know, in the survey, you know, it does talk about Australian ballot. I just can't really address it. Um, I can't address it in the warning. You know, at some point, people do have a responsibility to be educated. <clears throat> and, um, so that's the deal. So if they have questions, they can call here. But obviously, the, the warning is pretty simple. It's just the um, officers, it's yeah. taxes, it's social services, White River Valley ambulance, and then the days we're going to pay. So it's boom, 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 we're done. So couldn't be any more straightforward. <laughs> Therese, do we need to make a motion for the move to Australian ballot for voting? Might and as well. Motion? Okay. Move yes. to, I don't know what you want me to say here. Um, Australian ballot, just this for this, for the 2022 town meeting. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 The, the only thing I see on the warning that would have to be changed is right currently it says um, that this would be meeting at the Bethel campus middle school. So now we would have to change that to the fire station, correct? 
No, well, but we're going to do it at the school. She's going to vote at the school. The oh, you are. Reason, okay. I, I thought yeah, you said she had to vote at the fire station because. Yeah, the school wouldn't let us in there. Yeah. Right. But because that wasn't. Uh, no. that, and that was the election. That was not town meeting. That was a different election. No. Right. Yeah, it was the oh, November was election meeting. Oh, town no. meeting we had at the school. Right. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So we're good there then. All right. So move to approve the warning as written. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, as I said, you have to come in tomorrow. I'll put it at the back door because. We have to send this town report. Paul lovingly edited it this weekend, and we have to get it to Spalding Press. So I don't know about lovingly, but well, it's going with or without signatures. But I prefer it. Right. I can <laughs> be there, but it'll it'll be like right at four thirty. That's fine. Okay, I just I won't get out of school until four thirty tomorrow. What's the matter? You don't get a lunch break. You can't drive over. <laughs> I mean, I could. I have to go to Bethel Mills. I might as well swing by the town offices. There you go. <laughs> Tell those kids you'll be late. <laughs> don't use the tools without me. <laughs> yeah, we can always run it over to you if you can't make it. Let me know. Okay. Ready? Uh, next was uh, just finalizing the town report. Everybody have a chance to look the town report over? It's the survey for town report. Not town report itself. It's that oh, I'm one sorry, page. I read it wrong. That's okay. Yeah, no. survey. So <laughs> I have taken everybody's input and I took Lenny's input and defined floor vote and Australian ballot, um, tried to break out more about the constable. I mean, this is as good as I could get. I took everybody's suggestions and came up with this. Um, I did include in your packet, there's one line that you need to address. Under number two about the constable, I wrote, there are additional questions regarding policing in the online version of this survey. I don't know if you want that, but I included Gene Krause's email and he had um, several questions. I, there's no way I could get this. I can't do a second page because of the way we had designed it to be on the back cover. And so I did not edit Jean's questions because I don't know if you even want to have questions that are on the line that aren't on the paper copy. And obviously, if you're ever going to do anything more with a constable, we're going to do more digging. We're going to do more polling. But these are all decisions for you to make. Um, but I felt like everything else looked good. So thank you, Lenny. I did define <laughs> floor vote and Australian ballot because of your, I, to me, I didn't think about the fact that it needed to be explained. So thank you for that. So I'm not sure what your pleasure is about the online questions. I mean, I'm fine with keeping them. I had some questions about the way some stuff was worded, but I like the content of it. I think if somebody takes the, the paper ballot and wants to dig in deeper or wants to give further feedback, it's a great way for them to know there's an opportunity for, for further feedback. Um, and, I, and I think some people will want to only access the online version and won't do the paper one. You know, so I think it sort of hits, it hits a lot of different different people in different places. Um, I, I do have some questions about the wording of it, but I also get that we have a little more time to edit that version than we do the paper version that's gotta go to print tomorrow. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah. The paper version I was, I thought was good. I liked your edits. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Therese, for putting a lot of time into editing it. I mean, I think on my end of the thing, I, I guess I've been very frustrated with this survey and more so on, I just think we got way too in the weeds on this thing. Like the, the intent when I talked about, let's do a survey and address what every year, maybe we can grab a couple questions that are, you know, things like, like for anybody that remembers the Doyle poll, I mean, they were just very simple, like, you know, six word questions. And you know, what policing means to me versus Paul versus, 
you know, Lenny versus Ellie are all different things. But I think the information I was looking to get back was just like, should we open the conversation in that direction? You know, because obviously, regardless of how well or not we word these questions, it it's not like we're going to vote on this like tomorrow. It's uh, this is like to start the conversation, and then we'll dig into all the all the features that come with the question. You know, I just I, I guess the thing I would just caution is the you know the more detailed and long version of a survey it is it's gonna a lot of people are gonna tune out and either not participate or you know uh, a quick uh, couple word survey is more attractive than than reading you know each question's got a paragraph or two but I also think you're going to have a, an issue when you have a survey with so many opportunities to go a different direction you're going to have uh, instead of having 30 answers that you can get a majority of, you're going to have 300 answers and you got two here, two there, five over here, six. And you really, it really isn't going to tell you what the community wants or thinks. And you're not writing policy from this. The no. Doyle poll was yes or no questions. And that's you're right. right. And you're not writing policy. What you're asking for is if 80% of the community wants, does not, is not interested in policing or changing policing. It's a dead issue and we're not going to spend any time on it. If 80% of the people think they're interested in policing, then you're going to delve into it and we're going to have public hearings and we're going to talk about it and we're going to gather more information. So you're, I understand both points of view here. So you're um, never going to be 80 with that, with, with Jean's questions, which they're, they're, they're just too detailed. You're just not going to get, you're not going to get 20% on anything. Say nothing about 80. No. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I guess that was my thing, but. See, I think Gene's questions are, will be more relevant if we start digging into it. Okay, let's bring those questions out then. Okay. Yeah, I kind of had the same <clears throat> Same kind of feeling that, uh, you know, for example, in letter C in Jean's level of, I don't know if that policies or policies or what that was. I had questions there and, and questions about the qualified social service personnel. You know, what does that entail? Is that a, in addition to a constable or instead of a constable? I mean, these are things that we'll get into further down the road. Um, and then but there's some. Try, we're just trying to keep it simple. And if you think right police, to, to, if to you what think policing is expensive, start start hiring social services. I'm sorry, Dave. What? What? If you think policing is expensive, start hiring social services. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, no. I I understand what you know the the questions that he's asking, and they're good questions. But I don't know. I think they're a little they're like the next phase of the discussion. But there's also a level by statute that we have to, as a community, we have to have. Like, like there, we don't have a question, you know, we don't have an option to not want to do animal protection or control. You know what I mean? Like there, there are certain pieces to this that we have to do by statute, um, right. regardless of who the person is. And it, so I guess that's kind of where I thought we were starting to get into the weeds because someone might say, yeah, we don't really need to do that animal stuff but yeah we do you know i mean we we can't say we can't so i yeah, don't know that's that's true and you guys are in a unique position where constable by statute you have to have and they have to be part-time certified have gone through the academy but because you hired oscar um and justin they are both 2e or justin is not uh oscar is a 2e so because of that, you granted your constables additional police powers, which is a vote, which is something you voted as a select board that you could do. And not every town can, but so it sounds like between Dave, Paul, Chris, I'm going to remove the question of their additional, we're not going to ask the additional questions on the online, but we're going to kind of hold these so that if we dig for deeper in the future, we can kind of maybe re take another second look at these questions. Is that the majority view here? Can we put the survey that's going to be in the town report on 
the website? And yes, we're going to. I'm, I'm online going to access to that survey. Right. That's the one. I'm going to remove this comment from Jean about their additional questions. I'm taking that out. Then um, Kelly is going to either use SurveyMonkey or one of the Google apps and create the online survey. That way, the result as people fill it out, we get the results. Um, so we're going, that's how it's going to go online. Um, it will go online, you know, this way, yes, but it's also going to have a link at the bottom that we haven't created yet because I didn't know what the questions were going to be for sure. I mean, this might be something for the EIC to, you know, to focus on in their survey taking. What, the additional um, police questions? Yeah, the additional, you know, Jean's type of additional questions that get a little more detailed into uh, policies and, and what people think. Right. And, and the other thing, too, is, you know, Gene can't wade too deep into when he says the level of police, he's saying the level of polices. I think he meant I don't know. Police, is that police? I think he meant policing. Police services, maybe? Perhaps. And uh, some of the policies are actually driven by the. I don't think it's policies. I, I, yeah. anyway. I think it's policing, the level of policing. Yeah, I think so, too. So, but, um, so if that's it, Chris, if the majority of you are saying, no, then I'm going to remove that sentence and we're going to put this town, they, um, I'm going to put the survey in the town report as it is without that sentence in it. Yeah, and like, like I said, it's just, um, it's just hopefully, um, you know, we get some feedback, yes or nay, no feedback, so that if something does spike, um, that, you know, we have the ability to, you know, talk about it, you know, um, what, whatever it might be, you know, um, so, and, and it's just a, it's just an idea. I mean, if it, we fall down on it, <laughs> maybe we don't do the survey anymore or maybe, or maybe well, we did or something, but, um, it was just an idea to try to get something back, back from people. And, um, you know, it's kind of like the, Do that's what the Doyle poll for was for years was, Whatever he picked, like his, I think it was his top ten, wasn't it, Therese? I think there was about ten on there, yeah. And then yeah, kind of the top ten, top ten things that were floating around, not the legislation, though, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, just to get information back, because I remember one year he had put marijuana or something on there years ago, and you know, he got back like eighty percent of people wanted to see marijuana be legalized. You know, yeah. so it gained some traction into the legislation that way. So, yes, yeah. Len. You're muted, Lenny. Sorry about that. It's just a question on, um, you said it's going to be online, correct? Yes. Is it, just, is it going to be only on the town page or can it also be on EIC's page, the recreation page? Is that a possibility? Be, yeah. Well, it's gonna go in town report, which means right. that it's going to go to every registered voter and every property owner in Bethel. Then, um, yes, we can pass the link out to, you know, I know Kelly will put it on our Facebook page on our website and we, yeah, we can share it with, with, um, okay. whoever wants it. So I'll give it to her tomorrow and have her start working on figuring out either we're going to use survey monkey or the Google app, which I can't remember the name of. And, right the, and the different committees have the ability to put it on their page. Yeah, the only okay. one who has a website is you guys. Um, oh. Everybody else has a Facebook page, but oh, okay. they can, once Kelly posts it, they can like it or whatever, yeah. however that works. And um, yeah. so the EIC finally made their website live. Yeah. What's the, what's the, um, I'll have to look for it tomorrow. I'm sure I, I had asked somebody to make an edit on it and I don't know if they did. So I will, I need to, so I need to go look at it. Therese, I think it's linked through the town website. I, I was actually yeah, it on is. it not that long ago. And I okay. think I got there from the town website. Okay. I, I didn't, I don't, I'm not, usually the only time I'm on our website is to put something on our website. I'm not visiting it or actually sending someone there to look at zoning. So I'll <laughs> check out the link because um, I had, I needed a, a change made and I don't know if it got made. So, and I haven't had a chance to go back and look. So I will do that. Um. But yeah, so Lenny, yeah, once it's done, um, people can, if they want to put it on their website, absolutely. The more the merrier, I say. Yeah. Did we put a um, a date on when to have these back by or when we would take down the survey monkey? 
I don't know. I can't remember. You know, and <laughs> I, and I guess in order, in order for us to act on it in yeah. this session, because, yeah. you know, you probably would want to have it back in our hands by, you know, maybe. early midsummer if we wanted to work. I was going to, yeah, maybe April 1st, because we're going to uh, have it out there. It's going out in town report. Then at town meeting at both of the budget informationals, you could bring it up. So, I mean, I would think that anybody's going to fill it out should have it filled out by April 1st or April 15th when taxes are, I mean, I, I think yeah. we should, you know, because if it goes out, you know, it'll be out all of February, all of March. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll be, you know, after 60 days, who's really. Yeah. Right. So you want to say April 1st or April? Yeah, I just think we yeah. should have some sort of date in there that um, that sure. way you know to get it in by the time. And we can start collecting the data and then, um, you know, whatever, come May or whatever, we can start talking about it. Yeah, that's a great idea. I will make a note to um, add end date. Okay. Anything else in regards so to the... So if we back up a minute, do in our motion to go to the Australian ballot method, do we also have to put in there that ballots will be available to any registered voters who contact uh, the town clerk to get them in advance? <laughs> well, well, we can. I can add it to ballots? the minutes. It doesn't have to be in the motion, but it's okay. obvious that it, you did not get the authority to have the town clerk mail the ballots to every resident. So you didn't get that authority. And, and um, Pam's, you know, so I, I'll just put it in the notes, Paul, I'll go back yeah, and backtrack and just say- It would be like normal voting. absentee ballot. Um, yeah, or, absentee or early voting. Yeah. Ballots are available. Yeah, just- Blank a uh, town clerk and how to get them. Because yeah. just so you know, I mean, they can request them online 24 seven via the Secretary of State's website. They can request them by emailing Pam 24 seven. Um, they can leave a message on the town office line 24 seven. So they could stop in. So there's multiple ways that people can request a ballot 24 mm. hours a day, seven days a week. So I'll make sure I outline that in the minutes. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. All righty. Anything else with the survey? Are we good to go? Okay, it looks like we're good to go. Next, uh, any discussion on anybody wants to be the deputy health officer? My, we clarified that. It is the, the deputy health officer was at one point Chris Jarvis. The health officer is Neil Fox until 2023. The only reason that Chris became the deputy health officer is we were having some issues um with the health officer responding and so chris did it but chris has since resigned from that so well, you do are not required to have a deputy health officer you are required to have a health officer so just so you know um, oh, darn. i i resigned but the state didn't uh formally process that resignation yeah still on their uh, website I continue to get that now I, reading through it we i don't think that we we're not required to have a deputy health officer you're right but is somebody but we are required to have a health officer officer but not the deputy yeah. and neil is good until 2023 i did email neil today to find out what his status is um however if one of you knows somebody would like to be deputy health officer <laughs> bring it on now's the time <laughs> doug marshall <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think chris tried that last time yeah he's not here to defend himself tonight dave mm -hmm. oh well so, so i take it that's a no-go i'll let the state know we don't have a deputy health officer and um it's probably something you know definitely we should whatever advertise get the word out there yeah. We'll do, I'll make a note. We'll advertise. But it, if you look at the fine print, the the health officer is the one who's supposed to appoint the deputy. So yeah. I'll let you know if I hear from Neil. Yeah. It it yeah definitely somebody that's got a little bit of extra time because it can take a lot of time. 
I think it's something that next year on the budget, we should really look at. It may be more of a $2,500 a year stipend. I mean, you really, I think that's something I made a note in my budget notes for next year already saying, I think we need to look at that number mm -hmm. more. Yeah, I would, I would agree. And I think if, you know, you get feedback from Neil that he's sort of looking to end his term at the end of this coming term, then we need to get ahead of it well in advance, not, mm -hmm. you know, the month right. of appoint somebody well chris will be out beating the doors down because he'll automatically be the health officer if neil gets done so chris will be put a full page ad in the herald <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so we'll i'll uh like i said i'll let you know if i hear from him okay all righty annual certificate of highway mileage no changes this year. I know we've talked about this and there's a few we'd like to see change. It'll be something mm -hmm. we're going to have to work on over the spring and summer and fall, but there's no changes currently to the highway mileage. Move to approve the certificate of highway mileage. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll leave that on the clipboard tomorrow for your signatures. Did you say that payables were ready too, uh, Therese? Um, not for this week, but I think for the week that you guys met via Zoom, I'm afraid. I think we've. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah, they're old ones. No, nope, okay. not yet. Okay. It's old. And we have the um, Valentine Bonfire and Winterfest, um, the, the Recreation Committee is organizing. Actually, and the, and the Bethel for All, Bethel for All, and and the Recreation Committee yeah. are working together. Yep, it's the Better Connection Steering Committee. So, yeah. right. my whole take on it was from talking to Rebecca and and Ellie can chime in. The term bonfire is maybe used a little bit loosely. We're really looking at more like a campfire size fire, not like some <laughs> massive bonfire. That was my understanding. But let Ellie can tell us all about it because they just had a um, meeting at yeah. Five. Yes, um, we decided that yes, we want to make it more of a campfire, four feet to five feet, have, have it more of a campfire, four feet to five feet, and to also have one metal fire pit. So s'mores can be um, um, cooked on, on the on this metal fire pit that can be going on. And we want to have the, um, those lit at one o'clock and have the campfire and the metal um, fire pit going from one to five o'clock. So we could have the campfire and people mingling and then the metal pit having people cooking s'mores all, right. all the time. So the fire warden will issue a permit um, but uh, there's going to be specific rules about what could be burned. So I'm sure you guys obviously understand you have to bring clean wood. You can't, there's a lot of things you can't burn. Um, did you know, Ellie, where you're getting your wood to burn? Um, no. Um, uh, so I was going to, because Deidre said that she had some wood, the Phoenix have some wood. And Paul, our fire chief, said he had a friend that had some wood. So I was going to ask tomorrow. So I'm glad you brought it up. Because I wanted, they wanted to know what kind of wood that we would need, what, what we need, would need. Yeah, so, I think that, um, so you, the fire chief is Dave Aldrigetti. Okay. Not Paul. And um, no, no, the, the bonfire chief. For oh, our, okay. Our I'm event. sorry. I misunderstood. Yes, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Paul Boyner. Yes. He's got a friend that has some wood. Yeah. So, so we, we just wanted to find out what kind of wood would be required so you I say think that it's clean wood you could bring like you know clean pallets you could build but you can't burn any building materials nothing with paint on it you know nothing hazardous no trash mm -hmm. it's really what you're really looking at is probably burning just some wood that people would burn in their wood stoves or some law you know smaller chunks maybe from outside um mm -hmm. tree branches you know that sort of stuff you're looking okay. for clean clean wood yeah, because we, we didn't want some, somebody said some pallets, but they had some nails in them or something. And we said, we don't want that. Good for you because yeah, it's going to be in the driveway of the town. Yes, exactly. Because 
yeah, good for you because everybody's popping a tire out there. They're going to be ugly <laughs> in the yeah. spring. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're right. And it's less to rake up. So you're just looking at some, you know, clean wood that people would burn. But um, I, so I did deal with the fire chief and the fire warden. The fire chief does not have staff to have somebody present. Since you're okay. doing a campfire, it's going to be small. However, he is obviously, they're always on standby, but I did okay. tell him that I would mm -hmm. get back to him with the details. Okay. And, um, and he just, you know, that way he basically, he's gonna be on standby. They'll know there's a big emergency. You guys will dial 911. Obviously whoever's placing the fire is gonna be cognizant of power lines and close to this or close to that. So, um, but I'll email Dave Aldrigetti and let him know. And I'll email Gary Kugler, the fire warden so he can issue the permit once the select board makes a motion. Okay. So, so then, um, will that permit be, um, issued soon or, or yeah, I'll email Gary tomorrow and then, okay. um, I can scan it to you guys. Okay. And so then we, we can move forward to advertise for this event. Once the select board votes, you betcha. Okay. I okay. liked your flyer. Thank you. Thank you. Is this something looking at it, Teresa, I mean, is this something that the select board has to vote on? Because I guess I'm confused. It doesn't seem like this is really out of the ordinary for what the um, fire warden would approve for whatever, 4th of July or. Well, it's because it's on yeah. town property. You have to approve. Um, you guys have to approve because you're the landowners that way, because he can't issue the burn permit. He needs the landowner to do it. So really the only thing you're, you're making, a motion to approve the campfire so that the fire warden can issue the permit without your permission he won't issue the burn per the fire the burn permit that's why it's different okay so we just need a motion motion to allow bethel bethel for all in the recreation department uh permission to host a well did what do we call a campfire or outdoor? yes it's outdoor uh, campfire. So move. Saturday, February 12th. Yes. Rain uh, date, February 13th. Rain date? <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, move. It better not rain, Millie. <laughs> <laughs> but it is Vermont, so you never know. I mean, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the extra information, Ellie. Yeah, you're welcome. Very. It was, it was nice to see everybody out taking advantage of it. Uh, you know, the facility uh, yesterday it was, you know, it was a little warmer. You know, it was a little cold Saturday, but uh, it's tough because the weather has been like one extreme or the other lately. But uh, it was nice. It looked like there was a good turnout there yesterday. Yeah, I don't know if this is best for Ellie or for maybe Therese to pass along to Dietry. Um, there's a huge crack down the middle of the ice and it's starting to chip off. Um, and so oh. getting that refilled uh, and flooded before the, I mean, in general, it's a safety issue, um, but definitely before your event would be really helpful. Okay. Uh, uh, who's who's contacting Dave Aldrigetti now, Ellie? That Dietrich stepped back from doing that. Is that should I text Dave Aldrigetti and ask him who's coordinating him? Um, yeah, um, uh, uh, Dave has been working with Melissa Harwood from our committee. Okay, about that. So um, they have been in contact and. All right, so I'll send an email tonight then to Melissa Harwood and Dave Aldrigetti um, about yeah. reflooding okay. the rank. Okay. okay. Let yeah. him drink. Okay. Email. Okay. I'll do that tonight. Do you want me to CC you, Ellie? Yes, please. Okay. Ellie. Okay. Yep. I'll make a note. I'll. It's, I'll do it tonight. Thank you, Lindley. Yes. Thank you. All right. We had uh, discussion on some overhead garage doors at the town garage. So I've tried to get three estimates and I got the names of the local people. I one, um, 
emailed me and said they don't do doors that big. The second one I got an estimate from. The third one I've heard nothing, and I've made a follow up phone call and an email. So, um, and I'm trying, but uh, so far I only have one option and they obviously have a great reputation um i'm hoping i can get a second quote but it, you know there's a lead time right now of so, you know a few weeks so um or months i just well i just went to hook up the wiring on a door that was ordered in july that was installed last week holy cow yeah i'm i've dealt with them i'm dealing with them with my garage and they tell me 25 weeks uh, right now for uh, bringing in new doors. So. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to try to get these ordered this week. So if I don't care a second quote, I don't have a second quote. I mean, I'm, you know, what are we going to do here? Um, I but I need to get them ordered. So my request is to prove up to twenty five thousand dollars from the capital improvement fund. That's for the town the garage doors. The road crew has, is going to help the guy who's fabricating the new rails. So they're going to do some of the work and assist him so that we can keep his price down. Um, and then, of course, there's the doors and the mechanisms and everything themselves. So, how many doors is that? The four front doors or all six? Four front doors. Four front doors. So, so these doors, um, you know, if we have these installed, this will be part of the overall plan there for renovations or? Yep, that's the plan as we've replaced, we've upgraded the electric, we're getting the furnace has been evaluated and that's supposed to be fine i'm having some duct work extended into the back of the garage we've had um obviously had the structural analysis done and what our hope is our plan still is is to have an addition of a metal building abutted to this one and then just have it resided so it all looks the same um and uh, so but last year obviously we didn't do that because of the cost of the, um, well, you know, it was hard to, to find it when the cost of the metal, we're hoping that it goes down a little bit. My, I think in the spring, I'm just gonna bring in somebody who does metal buildings and bypass the whole architect thing and just get somebody who knows what the heck they're doing up there to, to talk to me and uh, see what our options are. So that's my plan now, but yes. And so the doors, um, we already got the okay. We paid uh, Child's Engineering. He engineered the um, the doors, so we know they're okay to go in the building. We know where extra weight has to go on the ground. So we've we've done all of our due diligence there. So even if God forbid you took it, the whole building down, you'd still be able to reuse the doors, the mechanisms, the rail, the whole thing. So, but obviously that's not part of the plan. Those doors have automatic openers on them, or? Yep. Yeah. Well, they're not automatic. Well, you know, they're, have, they have electric door openers. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 Any other discussion, or else I just need a motion to approve. Move to approve the purchase of four new doors. Second. And to uh, purchase and install four new doors. Yes. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, it sounds like at this point it's going to come out of next year's budget. <laughs> well, it's coming out of the capital budget, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything is behind. Ooh. So, okay. What is your... Um, after the garage doors, I mean, do you have a... What's next? Do you have a plan for what, what's in the next uh, order here? Or are we... Well, we also have, we are waiting on pricing from a concrete cutting company. We have one and it seemed high. I had Thad Smith come in and take a look and he, I sent him the quote we'd received and he thought it was a little high. We, bait, we need to fix when you go in the drain. Um, that may not be the right word. Uh, Dave Eddie will connect. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's, you know, you pull in and there's a grate there. Yeah. So I'm mean, gonna. So anyways, it's it's breaking. So um, I had Thad Thad take a peek at it, and his suggestion was to recut and maybe put in some metal plating and then replace the grates that are breaking. 
So we're currently getting pricing on that. We have one price. I thought it was high. I sent it to Thad. He thought it was high. He gave us another vendor. Alan was calling them waiting for a second quote. So that's part of it is to, that's been something on our insurance thing they wanted us to fix was the broken grates or tripping hazard. Obviously there's a few issues there. So that's the next piece. What are they, a French, French drain or something like that? Is that what you're talking about? The ones just inside the door? Um, they're on the, I don't know. I've never heard the term yeah. French drain. Um, That's what they are. Yeah, okay. French drains. Yeah, and they're all, they all drain into a, a holding tank too. Yep, yeah, which gets the, pumped. Uh, <laughs> yep, they just collect the runoff. Yep. Okay. Yeah, well, I've never heard that expression before. Okay, so yes, then that's what they have. Oh, perimeter drain, same kind of Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, so the price had included that we got that Alan had was, you know, somebody fabricating the grates. And um, I think they were, I want to say they were stainless steel, obviously they were pricey. Um, mm -hmm. So we were looking for another more affordable quote. Sure. Well, they might not be um, whatever steel they use might not be weighted for the trucks that are driving over them. Could be the reason why they yeah, they're old. I mean, these things are look, <clears throat> yeah. look brittle, but I mean, that's just me. Could be the gauge of steel that they used or something. I mean, could be. And if they're 50 years old, they've been no, having a lot of salt. They're only 48. 48 years old. And they've had a lot of salt on them and everything else. So the right gauge of steel lasts forever. Wow. Well, just the coatings that fail. But all righty. Uh, discussion in regards to unemployment insurance. So a big thank you to Dietrich because uh, she would, she, um, I just had wondered what it would cost us to do have unemployment insurance. And so she had to fill out tons of paperwork to get a quote. So when I saw the estimate for April to December, you know, with 1500 bucks, so a couple grand for the year, it's all going to be broken up, but part of this is for the transfer station. They had about 22 and a half percent of the premium. Some comes out of the municipal budget, some the fire department, pool, constable, public work, sewer, water. You know, because we are a reimbursable employer, which means if somebody collects unemployment, we're on the hook to reimburse the state. There's no, you know, we don't pay unemployment insurance. So, um, and I've been in municipalities before where we also never had unemployment insurance. And I'm not sure how many towns carry it, but you have, we've been lucky that anyone who's left has gone to another position. If somebody doesn't, um, it's very difficult to fight unemployment. Um, even if someone, you know, at, at any location, uh, not just a town, but a job is fired, they can still collect unemployment. And I do not budget any extra in our budget to cover that. So, but we could find this in our budget. I mean, I, this we could cover, I think out of labor or insurance or there's enough, you know, even our health insurance budget, if we don't have a 15% increase, we have a little money there. I just, in this day and age, I'm just thinking that maybe this is something we purchased as kind of a preventative measure. They're giving us a decent deal on the rate because we, you know, don't have a good history of claims, so. I was say I thought that was a fairly low rate, actually. Me too. <laughs> it's a lot lower than one I got when I did it. Mm -hmm. Is is there a? Um, I might have missed it, but is there a deductible or anything like that that we have to meet if there is a claim or? I don't know. I actually don't know. Nobody mentioned it in her paperwork. She didn't say anything about a deductible, so. I don't know. I think you just pay it in your claim. If there is a deductible, I'm looking at it again. I don't think she says. Um, current state wage in addition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It does not say that there is. It does not say, but she does say once you've been a member of program for at least a full year, you may be eligible for contribution credits uh, at renewal. You know, that's a good thing. I don't know, Chris, but even if it's a $5,000 deductible, which is the rest of our policy, that's still, depending on someone leaving, that could be just a week or two of salary. And because we have paid claims before, um, not necessarily huge ones, but um, this may be 
I think this is just a protection. That's. I'm not sure what the rest of you think, but. Oh, well, I think it's pretty reasonable considering the uh, the payback, potential payback. Yeah, I think you you got to look at the cost versus your exposure and payroll. Yeah. And yeah. Figure that percentage, and then like pay, like uh, Tree said, you know, you have one of your higher employees out for a week. There you go. There's your money gone. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. And we did fight. I fought, not fight, but I turned in three claims during COVID um, that I felt were fraudulent and refused to pay them. And they were, it was a lot of money between the three. One I knew was fraud because the person still was employed full time. And the other two I suspected were fraud and went to the state and said, I'm not paying these. And um, they turned them into the fraud division. And I haven't heard back since. So it must be they came up with the same thing. But you know, it's hard. People go back 26 weeks. We've paid claims before and, um, but it's, I just think this is the best alternative to protect our interests. Yep. Do we need a motion or? Uh... Um, <clears throat> well, it's not, I mean, I, I don't care. You can either make a motion that you're agreed or you just all agree, whatever you want. I don't okay. care. I didn't want to do it without your permission. Oh. I, don't, I don't think we necessarily need a motion, but if we yeah. have, okay. seems to make sense, right? It's one of those things mm -hmm. that yep. one time and it pays itself, right? Does anybody say no? Okay, so we've got a consensus. Okay, then I'll I'll move forward with that. Um, Chris, can we, I, I've got a message in the chat from Lenny, um, and I just feel like we need to, if we could just talk about this for a second. Um, he's wondering if the, he, he's chiming in on the survey for the town report, and Lenny's question is, and I'm sorry I didn't catch this earlier, but I'm also taking the minutes, Lenny, so I, <laughs> um, it says he feels like the question on the constable maybe need to be a little more neutral. Um, for example, um, do you see the need for a full-time constable or would you support expanding the constable hours to full-time? I think when we look at our current wording is, well, due to the challenges of hiring and retaining a part-time constable and the increase in time they need to process paperwork, engage with community members, court appearances, et cetera, would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation to full time? Question mark. So I can understand your point, Lenny, that you're afraid it might be leading, but I was changing this because in the last discussion, you know, two weeks ago, everybody wanted police services defined. They wanted people to understand why we may want more hours because the constable's duties take up more time. And so this is one of those things. I certainly did not intend for the question to be leading. I'm trying to explain why the select board was entertaining the idea was because maybe they're paying for 20 hours, but they may be only getting 10 hours because people are busy. So this was kind of a compromise or, or compilation of several things. Um, what made me look at that is all the other questions don't have any of that definition behind them. Right. But that was kind of the big beef last time was people felt that we weren't explaining enough why we may be looking at more hours. Um, so, I mean, the, I'm, I remember the original question from last time was exactly that. It was a very dulled down version. It was. And then it became this, you know, we're in the weeds now. Uh, yeah. Um, when it should just be a simple Yes or no? Do we do we want to have this well, like in 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 what in in what you've written? You do have. Would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation to full time? And I'm thinking, why can't it just be that? So people can just sort of think about that. Okay, so your thinking is just the question. The only question should be remove the first part and just the question. Only question on the on the. Uh, survey is 
would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation to full time question mark and then leaving what the constable re responsibilities are. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I just, I just don't think it should lead in one way or the other. Right. You know, for or against. I think it should just be a flat question and people can ponder what that means to them and answer that question. Okay. Well, and, and we certainly were not trying to lead someone. Yeah. We were trying to explain because some people were saying, well, why are you even considering expanding the hours? So it was a bigger explanation. So yeah. um, your suggestion is... is well, like what Chris was saying, I think once you get those answers, that's for another. And what Paul was saying and what they were saying, I think that's for another discussion. Right, delve you into know what it. I mean? Yeah, no, I got what you're saying. I, uh, simpler is better. Um, so, um, and I'm sorry that I missed any, uh, um, Lenny's question in the chat. Um, so what does the select board think about just simplifying question two to just that? Would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation to full time constable response in parenthesis? It says constable responsibilities include working with the town and school community, animal control, speed enforcement assisting the state police, assisting with domestic issues, enforcement of drug and other laws. I thought that part of the discussion was that we needed to get more information out in the question as to why we're asking the question to begin with. That was a big so part of the I kind of like the, I mean, it's not a full blown explanation of all the details, but I think that it lends to the question, why, why are we asking this question? Um, because of the concerns and the, and the problems that we've been having getting adequate coverage. And my comment on that day was not necessarily defining police services. My comment actually was asking, okay, what do I think those services are? What do, what does Paul think? What does Lindley think? What does Ellie think? I think you'll find without some sort of definition that you, you ask 20 people what the police services actually are and you'll get 10 different answers. <clears throat> so without knowing what police services we're trying to provide, uh -huh. I, don't, I, I get, maybe I get inspired in weeds too, I don't know. I don't know. That comes underneath. And I think the underneath the question is great. I think the beginning of the question is leading. The beginning of the survey part is leading. And I, and I understand what you're saying, Lenny. Uh, the, my only concern there is, is uh, people that I that have made comments to me, we don't want police. And that's that's, you, know what, you know what they do? No, we, they, they stop me because because they don't like me, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I think all of our... Really, I'm, I'm sorry, Lenny, but I'm, I'm I hear explaining you. to you real time, real life events. So that's I what you. I was saying. We need to know, everybody needs to know more about what they do before you say, I don't want them. I right, think I, think, I, think saying, I think we're saying the same thing. I'm, I, in, in lieu of what you're saying, I'm saying go from my suggestion would be to go from, would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation to full time? And then what's in parentheses you add on and you take just, out the first part. So you leave the parenthesis, just would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation full time question mark, and then leave the parenthesis information in there. Which explains what they do, yeah. Oh, okay, I thought that was what we were taking out. All right. Just I can go taking out. Okay. What do you think, Lindley? Do you, what do you think about the first part of the question? Yeah, I think as long as we keep the explanation, I, I like the inclusion of what the responsibilities yeah. are so that that's clear. Um, I think as long as we keep that, I'm fine with changing that, that language right at the beginning of the like, do the challenges. Um, just yeah, I'd be okay with that. I, yeah, I feel like I'm going back and forth in my mind, but I think as long as as long as we're keeping that sort of explanation of the role and the duties, mm -hmm. then I'd be okay to change it. Okay, so you're okay with changing it, Dave. You're okay with changing it, Paul. What do you think about taking out that first part 
due to the challenges. I think it changes the meaning of the question um, to uh, do you want to expand to a full-time police force or not? Yes or no. I think it changed it, it. The reason we put that other stuff in there was to let people know the difficulties that we're having with the current uh, setup that we have with the constable. Um, and I thought that was one of the main complaints that we had when we started talking about this. I thought so, so too. I'm a little confused that we want to, now we want to eliminate the explanation or some of the explanation anyway. So, I'm, yeah. Well, if you're sitting at home and you don't know anything, the, for me, just read, I'm trying to read it as just a person sitting at home doesn't know anything. Uh -huh. The explanation leads, leads you towards that conclusion. And that is not what the what the survey is about if i'm not mistaken right we were is, yeah this the is survey yeah. is just to get a basis on what people think about adding a constable and what their duties are not the reasons for that as in the financial reasons is then the other correct or is it for that uh, the reason for the question was to explain the difficulties that we're having maintaining a part-time constable, which is just impossible because of the increase in hours and the fact that we don't, it's not a full-time position. So I thought that's, that was the focus of putting that little explanation in the front. Hmm. Uh, so people would say, why are you asking me this question? You ask me, do I want to expand to a full-time police force or not? Or are you trying to explain that we're having difficulties right now and we may need to look at talking about expanding the hours and the pay because of the additional burdens that are, that are being put on that position. Yeah, Paul and I have been through several iterations of this question yeah, yeah. and back and forth. And what do you think, Chris? Well, I think one thing that we have to be careful of is we have to um, be careful with how we're defining the, the position itself. So we have to realize that this is a constable position and not, you know, a police department position and, and because they're completely different scopes. Uh, now we've been fortunate that our, well, uh, that one of our constables has the certifications like a police officer, but we have to understand that, you know, typical constable um, responsibilities in the school really is working in and around the town and, and school community, animal control, speed enforcement. That's, that's pretty much everything. And the last uh, couple of police, like assisting with the state police, assisting with domestic issues, enforcement of drug and other laws, that typically isn't a constable position's uh, responsibilities. However, we're lucky enough to have someone that has the accreditation to be able to do some of that work, uh, which, you know, I don't know, it's kind of confusing, but um, like if you just went and hired just a constable with just the certifications to be a constable, there's a lot of duties that they cannot perform um, that only like VSP would have to do. I um, could say constable's current responsibilities include... Yeah. That way it kind of lets people know, you know, that's, we're talking about what we currently are doing. Um, I think we have to be careful with that. I do agree with, well, I agree with Lenny on the point that thank you for coming back. Cause that was my full intention at the beginning was like, we're just getting too far in the weeds here. Like it's gotta be a simple question. Okay. Um, and, and then it can spar more conversation later if people choose to go down that road or not. But I also agree with Paul that, the full intent of the question was we are having issues with finding a part-time constable uh, basically because there there's none out there, you know? So in order for us to give our community uh, the, the expertise that has been asked for in the past, we may need to hire somebody full-time because I think just, he just answered the question. Huh? What? I think he just I think he just said it. We are having issues finding a full-time constable. Would you da, 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 and then add the responsibilities on? 
right? Which yeah. is kind of what we were saying, because we were already saying due to the challenges of hiring. But you're saying we just say we're having a hard time finding a constable. I mean, it's just the only difference. It's just that, you know, that other information leads me to leads me to think that as a citizen, people are going to be more people are not going to decide on their own. They're going to go, well, they said they're having, you know, it's hiring. It's this. No, maybe we should vote that way. Maybe I should say yes. If we're asking them, if we're asking for honest opinions, we want to try to keep it as neutral as possible, don't we? Yeah, and it's also hard to say we're having a hard time finding a constable. Yeah, I know. Because we already have two constables. Whether they're <laughs> working enough is one thing, but but full time. Yeah, but a full time constable. And it's just like any, you know, to to whatever to work down at Babe's Bar or work at any establishment right now to find someone. There's there's so much competition in the work. Mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. That I mean, unless you find the absolutely perfect scenario, which we did have in the town for years, where you know, like we talked about, like someone that shared hours with different communities, but we don't have that anymore. So it's like, like we promise, we right now we promise the taxpayers twenty hours of service a week, and we're probably getting what six to ten. Yeah. And the only reason why we're getting six to ten is because that's all that these individuals have because they have full time jobs. Mm -hmm. So we're saying the only way that we feel that we can make fulfill the commitment to the uh, community is to look for a full time person, mm -hmm. because who wants to come in for 10 hours when they could be a full time officer, you know, mm -hmm. I think that that's the intent. Um, okay. However, so, we word that Teresa, I don't care. <laughs> well, here's the deal under constables responsibilities, I am going to take out assisting with domestic issues and enforcement of drug and other laws. I'm going to leave it because you're right. If we only define a constable, then what I would say is constable responsibilities include working with town and school community, animal control, speed enforcement, and speed enforcement, um, et cetera. And then that's it. That's going to help cut down. So I only have one page. I only have so many words. And you're correct, Chris, the things that we were listing were more a 2E capability than a constable. So if we reword this first sentence again, um, so instead of saying due to the challenges of hiring or retaining a part-time constable and the increase in time, blah, blah, we just, are we just going to cut it to would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation to full time? Um, or are you saying you want to start this thing by saying because we're having a hard time fulfilling the duties of a constable? Or, you know, or I, I'm sick of reading. I'm fulfilling the commitments to the community. I, I, I think most operative is full time, it's the commitment of a full time constable. Well, we're not having a hard time finding a full-time constable because I don't have the money to hire one anyway. So that oh. question is misleading and wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, so I'm not putting that in there. Full -time constable. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I, don't, I don't have the money for that right now. So okay. I think if we just say, would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation to full-time, question mark, the end. I mean, why, you know, I guess if we're just going to make it cut and dry, let's just make it simple, straightforward. If people haven't followed this saga of why we need a full-time constable, then, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, unless, I mean, I could certainly add some wording that we're, um, you know, uh, feel like we're not fulfilling our commitment of providing I, I don't know honestly I don't know <laughs> and I think what if you just, it, uh, keep it simple what if you just cut out this the second part of the first sentence do so keep it due to the challenges of hiring and retaining a part-time constable would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation yeah something like that uh, the right. second so the, I like that you get to say that there's it's a challenge but it's shortened. You don't have to rewrite anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know how hard this is, but all right. So if everybody's good, that's what we'll say. 
Due to the challenges of hiring, retaining a part-time constable, would you support expanding the constable hours and compensation to full-time? Question mark. And then we'll leave the parenthesis of what the current by statute constable only duties are. I won't add in there what the current your responsibilities are because you have given that police power to somebody who's a 2E. Does that? All right, that's what we're doing. Thank that. you, Jesse and Lenny. That was helpful. You need somebody else to. I've been doing it too many times. So it. All right, there's nothing else in the chat. Okay. Keep hitting the new um, Did we have anything else in regards to the unemployment insurance? We were, we were good there. Yeah, you guys were good. So I had a consensus. So I'll reach out to her and let her know we're all set. Anything left on the town manager's report? I just wanted to, um, <clears throat> so two things, Dave, Eddie, I'm sorry. I, it was been crazy dealing with the tax sale today. The, everybody's coming out of the woodwork since it went in the paper. So I'm going to look at your RFP for the transfer station tomorrow. So sorry about that. Um, it wasn't a lot of trying. I just didn't get it. Uh, up. We, we're already moving a whole lot faster than it been going. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, I'll get to you tomorrow anyways. Um, so the tax sale, um, we've had a couple people pay um, and I have had quite a bit of interest in some properties. So today myself, Pam, Dietrich had been dealing with different people trying to get bidders out. One of the things that I talked to Chris Jarvis about today was the fact that there may be one or two properties that do not go at tax sale. That if these two in particular don't go, this will be our second time putting them up for tax sale. So on the 14th, um, our next select board meeting, we're really... Gonna, you're going to have to decide if you're going to give me authority to bid on a couple of these properties. Um, because what, um, you know, at some point, what are we going to do? Just keep trying to sell them at tax sale and it's not going to work. The option is we buy them at tax sale. Um, and then if, if you have to evict someone, we'll have to go through the eviction process. If we have to hire someone to clean them up, we'll have to clean them up. Um, my understanding is, and I will find out for sure, is that we could put a lien on the property for our expenses for cleaning them up in eviction so that when we sell the property, which is what would happen, we sell the property um, after we have a year, you know, we'd hold it for a year. And if the people don't redeem it, we would own it. We evict, we clean up or just clean up if there's no one to evict then we resell, then we sell it and we would recoup our money. We obviously know we're not going to make a profit, but we would break even and we would stop the cycle because, you know, we have some, a couple of properties and one in particular that's into us for a lot of money. How many times are we going to tax sale it and have nobody bid on it? That's the thought. So it's just something for you guys to think about, but you'll have to make a decision at our February 14th meeting. Um, to give me the authority because I'm not buying anything at tax sale and nor can I without your authority to do so. Um, so I'm working hard to get some sales. There's one I'm hoping that I'm convincing maybe somebody to buy, but there's one I'm just not sure it's going to go. So. And have we had, um, have we had good responses to individuals um, to uh, make arrangements with you to, to make whole on some of this? How are we making out with that or no? Um, no, I mean, some of the people that have gone, we had one declared bankruptcy, which means we're posed for a little bit. I did talk to an attorney who's the, who's the attorney for um, the bankruptcy and um, you know, he's been keeping me in the loop. I told him if he needs information for court to, to let me know. Um, and we will have to submit, you know, if they get accepted to get their stay extended, um, hopefully they get the property sold and have a legit purchase and sale, in which case we'll get all of our money and that'll be it. That'll clean that property up. Um, 
and then we have we had one or two that redeemed um but you know we're going to sale with a few uh, with a, there's a couple that are not that i don't think will redeem before february 15th but anybody that's a first time tax sale and i'm not really convinced that we need to do anything about hopefully we have some bidders but the two that we tax sailed i don't know what three years ago they're just getting deeper and one completely walked away from the property and if we don't have a buyer then eventually right. <laughs> how long are we going to let these properties go yep. that's just well, um, i know we've talked about before that the town you know and we talk about it more in February or whatever, but you know, that not usually the town's position to want to be a real estate broker or own any pieces of property, but you know, there, there are certain circumstances in which we sometimes have to, um, uh, it, you know, like we're talking about now, you know, these extreme pieces where people are into you for over $20,000. Who's you know, the people, anybody who's walked away, they're never coming back. They don't care. We'll hold it till the cows come home. But right. who knows? I mean, I, I'm certainly trying to get a sale. I um, actually heard something on the news tonight about a program for neighbor works. So I'm going to look into that tomorrow to see if I can't maybe, you know, work with someone. But it's also hard. You know, we had COVID opportunities. People were given opportunities to apply to get uh, to help with their water sewer whatever and if i called people offered to help them apply they didn't apply. i mean what are you gonna do you know yeah. um so you think that there would be um programs and stuff out there especially with the shortage of housing well uh, there has been chris but if the owners themselves won't even apply or won't let us apply on their behalf like giving them assistance to apply i mean at some point there's nothing we can do um, oh. But like I said, I heard about neighbor work, so I'm going to look in that. And... There was a program on the news tonight. Is that the one? Uh, yes. A uh, $50 million yep. dump mm -hmm. from the federal government for property taxes and mortgages. Yeah. Um, specifically. That's the uh, one. And um, I know neighbor works, so I'm going to reach out to see what the program is tomorrow. But, you know, at some point, the Lord helps those who help themselves. And if we've offered and offered and we can't get anywhere, then, you know, so it's right. something for you guys to think about. Um, I'll have a, certainly a legal way in from the attorney, but um, it's not going to be an easy process. It'll be, you know, but mm -hmm. it's, it may be what okay. we have to do. Sounds good. Um, so that's it for the town manager's report. All right. And uh, select board meeting minutes from the 10th of January. I had one uh, quick amendment on the second page in that yep. first paragraph. Uh, it says Chris Jarvis reported about the town of Island Pond, but I believe it was Dave Eddy that actually brought mm -hmm. that up. I gotta find it. Page two, top paragraph. Yeah, who did that? Was that Chris or was that Dave? Who's oh, who said? Dave actually, yeah. Was it you, Dave? Yeah, that was me. All right, we'll fix you, up. Dave. And go down a little further. Uh, yep. Has, a survey has been drafted. So down a little further, it says the Australian ballad would be off removed. So I think we take the off out of there. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, so there's two edits. Anybody else? Move to approve the minutes as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ready? Sounds good. The Conservation Com Commission had a meeting minutes in there. That was, I think that was the only ones I saw that were in there. Oh, I put the year in review in there. That's the year in review I'd written. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know if anybody had any suggestions or changes, complaints. That's what I came up with. Um, Chris had seen it. I, I don't know if Paul, you'd read it because you edited the town report. Um, so if anybody has any issues with that, let me know. Okay. 
speak now or forever hold your peace because it's going in the floor. <laughs> So is the plan to continue Zoom uh, meetings for the foreseeable future? Or maybe roll it out on a meeting by meeting basis until, you know, you know, we get- I'm, I'm sure the public is gonna expect us to do this at least one more because yeah. they just said on the news today that they expect the, uh, the uh, cases to spike mid February. I don't know how they can figure that out, but it's in the news, so obviously it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I think the fact that we just made the call to do Australian ballot for town meeting to me says we at least go to March in this mode and then maybe reevaluate that first meeting in March. Um, okay, depending because... on what we decide, I did want to bring up that the um, the marquee at the town hall has is incorrect and still says six and in person. Um, I know I, it is, I'm sorry. I figured I, it was also gonna be changed really soon. So just as a reminder. Yeah, I gotta yeah. do that at town hall. I totally spaced. We've been, yeah, shorthanded. So I didn't even think about it. So town hall- It was hall, too cold out to go out there and change that around anyway. Yeah, fix <laughs> marquee. I, I um, think we all know that the, you know, we hadn't heard about it very much locally, but locally now, I'm hearing about a lot of COVID issues. Uh, you know, right here, we all know somebody or more than one person that's um, coming down with the, the uh, COVID. So I think it's a safe thing to do. So you want to do the 14th and the 28th, because I will tell you, I did not do a special meeting for your budget informational because last year there was like nine and we made up six you know, of the people. So I included it. I'm just going to put it in your February 14th and your February 28th to do a budget informational kind of as a piece of each of your select board meeting. Um, yeah. And, and I did have to put that in town report and give out the zoom link on the first one and all that. So um, it kind of makes sense and it would be an ease to just say you're going to do the February 14th and 28th meetings on Zoom would be helpful to fix the marquee at the town hall. And are you going back to six o'clock? Uh, Chris, you got any um, issues with six in February? No, no, six should be good. So you want to do both your meetings? Yep. Yeah, I think so. Okay, 6 p.m. All right, we'll get the town hall thing fixed. Um, well, thank you, Lindley. Yes, I totally spaced on that. Ready? Anything else to come before the board? Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for this evening. Yeah, good night. Good thank to see you, everyone. Good night. Yeah, thank you, Ellie. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Safe out there. Good to see everybody. Good night. Um, thanks, good night. Lenny. Thank you, Justin. Thank Jessica. you. Everybody.